If your motivation is to take photographs to use as a reference material to create other artwork from, I'll show you that a smartphone camera can be all that you need. Hi, I'm Anna Mason. Welcome to this episode of Nature Studio TV, here to help you become the artist you want to be. I've always been really positive about using photos to create paintings and drawings from. It allows for capturing lots of detail and working at your own pace. And I've always found getting out into nature and photographing my subject matter to be a really inspiring part of the process. These days, most of us have top quality cameras with us all the time in the form of our mobile phones. If you're anything like me, you're using yours to snap plants and scenes that you'd like to paint all the time. But are we getting the most out of our photos? In this episode, we're joined by acclaimed nature photographer Adrian Davies, who's taught workshops for organisations including Nikon and the Royal Photographic Society. He's also the author of several photography books. And in this video, Adrian's going to share his top three tips for getting the best photos from your smartphone camera. Let's take a look. It's often said that the best kind of camera is the one that you actually have with you. Even if you have a bigger or more advanced camera, the chances are that you'll have your smartphone handy more often. Smartphone photography is an exciting field with continual advances in technology. The capability of smartphone cameras is developing all the time. What your smartphone camera has the potential to achieve will depend on the model you have. Even if yours isn't all singing or dancing, there's a lot you can do to get better quality images with what you have. First of all, my number one piece of advice for improving the results you can achieve with your camera is to use a tripod or other form of camera support. It's so easy to jog the phone when you're taking a picture and the tiniest movement can cause you to lose detail. You can get small tripods that fit in your pocket and there are even phone cases that come with a built-in tripod. So this doesn't need to be something extra to remember when you go out. To avoid jogging the camera, I always recommend you use the timer feature so that you can take your hands away before the photo is taken. Most models will have a built-in self-timer. If you have no option but to hand hold the camera, use both hands to hold the camera still and tuck your elbows into your waist to keep the arms as anchored as possible. If possible, rest one or both elbows on something to steady yourself. If you go to the main settings menu or phone and open up the camera settings, you'll probably find some extra features there which you're not using. But did you know that you're not tied to using the native camera app that comes with the phone? Excitingly, there are many third-party apps out there, some paid for, some free, which you can use to operate your phone's camera. And what's so great about third-party apps is they often have more controls because they haven't been streamlined or hidden. This makes them an excellent choice for making better use of your camera phone's potential. One rule many people agree makes a composition interesting is the rule of thirds, where you imagine lines separating the image into thirds horizontally and vertically, and position your subject on one of the intersections. Of course, you don't need to be this prescriptive when you're composing shots, but if you're having trouble deciding on how to fit a subject into the frame, the rule of thirds can be helpful to remember. To take the guesswork out of it, some camera models even include grid lines as a native feature, which can sometimes be hidden under the main camera settings menu. Adrian's provided loads more tips and tricks as part of a course we've made with him. It's aimed at helping you improve the quality of photos you take as a reference for making further artwork. It's available now to Nature Studio members and you can find more information on it via the link below. If you've enjoyed this mini class, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hop on over to naturestudio.com where you can take full length video classes for free and find loads of resources to help you capture the beauty of nature in your artwork. Thanks so much for watching.